And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Roll Through the Ages, the Bronze Age, was a, a game that I really enjoyed. It was a Yahtzee-style variant where you rolled dice and you had like a little civilization game. Really cool, fast, a, a chunky box full of lots of cool components. Now they made a sequel to it, Roll Through the Ages, the Iron Age. Well, isn't that basically the same thing? Well, no, they actually changed quite a few things. It used the same basic premise. And if you played one, you can kind of, I mean, it, it's, it's pretty easy to transform over, but it has a very different feel to how the game plays. If you've never played the first one, don't worry. Let's show you this one and see if it's worth. Can they make a civilization game using dice as the main theme? In this game, each player is going to get a player board and a sheet. You see the sheets are pretty big. There's also a reference card that explains what a lot of the things in the game do if you need that. Uh, there's also a pile of dice and they're still using these wooden dice which are fine but they could rub off eventually. And then there's this fate die that you're going to have. Now what you're going to do on your turn, the, or, or before you start the game actually, you're going to decide do I want a port or do I want a province? So let's say I start with a province. I'm gonna fill in both of these squares here. That province gives me two armies. So I have an army track here. This is, a, um, we have the this precious goods, ships, army, goods, and food track here. And everyone starts at three. They start with one army, so actually I have three armies here. And no ships and none of the precious goods. So I have one good, three food, three armies to start off with. And then I also get plus one tribute. So I fill in one of these tribute squares. At the end of the game, each tribute square is essentially a point. Now, if you, you're gonna be rolling dice in your turn. You always roll the fate die, and you're also gonna roll dice equal to the number of provinces you have, or the number of ports you have, whichever one is higher. So at the beginning of the game, you're gonna roll two dice and this fate die. So once your turn, you roll these three dice. Now when you roll these dice, you are going to decide whether you're going to keep them or keep rolling. If you decide to keep them, you can set some aside, like I say, no, I don't really, I'll keep this one, but I'm gonna re-roll these two. Ooh, I like both of these, so I'm gonna keep these. Now, once you do this, the first thing you'll do is you're going to check what the fate die does. In this case, the fate die makes all my food dice at plus one. So this one would give me three food, but now it's going to give me four. This gives me two food or two people. I'm gonna say that it's three food. So I'm starting the game here with seven food. So on my board here, I'm just gonna take seven food. Then I have to feed each of my provinces. I have two provinces, so they each require one food. If you can't feed your provinces, you're going to take disasters, which are essentially negative points. And then that's it. That's my whole turn, and it goes to the next person. But what do the different sides of the dice do? This one gives you people, and there's another side of the die that gives you people also. Uh, where is it? Three people here. People are used for various things on the board. Uh, people can be used to fill in the squares here for the ports and the provinces. So if I want more provinces, I just simply use the people that I've got this turn and fill in the squares, which can give me more armies and more tribute. You also see that ports need people, and then if I fill the matching number of symbols, by spending goods, I can get more ports. I can also use people to fill in the squares of a monument. If I fill in the squares of a monument, so I start filling this in here, let's say I finish the Colossus here. When I finish the Colossus, if I'm the first player to do so, I will get four points. Otherwise, I get two points if someone else has finished it first. And so there's different monuments you can build. The, the bigger ones take more squares, but also give more points. The city walls let you ignore barbarians, which we'll talk about in a minute. Then, another thing that you might roll on the die is you might roll this torch. You can buy developments on your turn. You can use goods that you have, or the precious goods, if you have any. Precious goods are worth five, um, goods are worth one, and these torches are three when buying developments. When you buy a development, at the end of the game, it's going to give you a victory point, and it's also going to give you a special ability. 
For example, let's say I have, an, I have six total. I could buy uh, metallurgy here, which now makes my innovation dice, the torches, worth five instead of three. If I uh, had architecture, I could use two people to build three monument boxes, so I can fill in three boxes when doing that. Now, those are the main things that you can do in your turn as you're going to be getting goods and things. At the end of your turn, you are allowed to spend four goods to take one uh, wealth, or the precious good here, so four to one, and then you can spend those later on as five, or at the end of the game, those are also worth a victory point each. Now, you're obviously going to want more dice, because more dice will give you more options. However, one side of the die, and on the fate die too, shows this skull. And it gives you a good, and it gives you a person, but it's also a skull. Two things happen here. When you roll these, you can't re-roll them. And at the end of your turn, depending on how many you roll, something will happen. In fact, it's listed right here under disaster results. If you roll one, you lose a point. If you roll two, you have to do a battle against a level four barbarian. If you do a three, your opponents lose three points. So sometimes when you have two, you're trying to roll a third one just so it hits your opponents and not you. If you do four, you lose four points. And if you do five, everybody, including you, has to fight against someone with ten. So what's a battle? Uh, there's two different kinds of battles that can happen in the course of the game. You fight barbarians, um, which will happen often, or, or maybe you're fighting a neighboring country, which would be down here. Your conquest shows how strong your neighboring country is. Here, they're a country level of one. To beat them, you're going to add however many armies you have. So I have three armies, so I'm feeling pretty good. Plus any bonuses you have. Maybe, for example, here I have formations, which gives me plus two to battle. Or maybe later on, I can add ships to battle, so I get bonus for each ship that I have. There's different ways to fight. So when you fight a neighboring country, this is easy to beat. It's a conquest of one, I beat it. You take the difference of your strength, so here I have an army strength of three minus one, and that's going to give me two tribute, two points for the end of the game. Then, I add another box here to Conquest, because that means neighboring countries are going to get harder. And whenever, whether you win or lose a battle, this goes down by one. So whenever you roll this symbol on the Fate die, you're allowed to attack a neighboring country. Other things on the Fate die here, this makes all your food dice minus one. This lets you take any die, even a Skull die, and turn it to the side of your choice. This here is a Skull side. And this one here is Tribute. You compare your army strength to each opponent, and each opponent, you're going to get points equal to the difference if you are greater than they are, unless they give you a good. If they give you a good, you don't get any points from that person. Uh, and when you fight barbarians, you're going to go up against their strength. Their strength is four, so you compare your strength here. If you have to fight the guys who are ten, and that's basically it. So, at the end of the game, and the game will end, based on how long of a game you want, a certain number of developments will be finished, or a certain number of monuments will be finished, when that happens, each development gives you a certain number of points. You'll have points from some of your monuments. You'll add up all your tribute. That's a pile of points. You will subtract all your disasters and then some bonus points from some of the developments. And whoever has the most points is the winner. There was also a, at the time it was Kickstarter exclusive. I'm not sure um, what the status of this expansion is, but you could use ships. And if you play with this game, the, you actually use a different sheet because normally to build ships you have to get the technology that allows you to build ships. But in this one you start with ships being built and you can use people and ships to send different pegs out to these different places which will give you special abilities. So if I go here I get a free ship. But if you fill up one of these completely you also get three points at the end of the game. So it gives you another thing to do with people and ships. Roll Through the Ages, the Iron Age, has some really neat concepts. Of course, bringing from the original game the idea of dice. Now this one has the Fate die, which adds a little tiny bit of randomness to the game, but since you can re-roll it, not so bad, and it kind of sometimes dictates what you do. You saw in my first roll there, I rolled the, the one that gives plus one in all crops. Well then I'm tempted to keep the crops that I rolled when maybe I was going to keep people instead. And then when you get the crops, and that's obvious, you want to do that, but people, where do you put them? Do you send them in monuments? Do you try to get more dice? Goods, do you save up a whole pile of goods and convert them over to give you a better exchange rate? Uh, or do you buy some really low level technologies as soon as you possibly can, hoping that the special abilities from them help you? Do you rush for a quick end to the game by building a number of technologies? There's a short game and a long game. Short game five technologies ends it. Seven ends a long game. Um, the all but one of the monuments being built by one player is a short game. All of them being built by a player is a long game. I don't think I've ever seen that. And then a certain number of tribute, 30 or 50. 
And so, you know, you could push for a quick end to the game and try to get points that way, but I have some concerns here, though. I, I play with some people who are good players, but I play with some people who are excellent players. And we have not yet been able to figure out, and I've played this quite a bit, actually, and I played it solitaire, trying to figure out the best way, how ports are not just better than provinces in almost every way. Not th actually, I shouldn't say that. They're not better than provinces. Provinces are actually really good. They give you uh, armies, and you can use those armies to conquer people and get tribute, and they give you straight up points, and the more you get, that's great. But that food that you have to pay every turn is very difficult. In this game, it's really useful to get lots of dice. So you can get lots of dice by either getting a lot of ports or a lot of provinces. So, you know, you kind of go with one or the other. You can mix them, but you're not going to get a lot of dice that way. Well, there's one side of the die that I, I didn't show you, but it's a pretty critical side of the die because I want to talk about it now. And this one here gives you a good for every port you have. So in the port strategy, which is pretty straightforward, you build as many ports as you can. You spend your resources building those ports until you have all the dice. Once you have all the dice, you roll a couple of those, get a resource for every port that you have, and you're getting 10, 15 resources on your turn, using those to build big technologies, and you're fine. If you do the province strategy and get a lot of provinces, you can get a lot of armies out, and you may or may not be able to attack people and do well with that regard, but you're having to spend lots of dice every turn paying for food. I think they're close in equality, but I think to go forward for as many ports as you can and roll dice and smash your opponent seems to be a very dominant strategy in the game, especially the short game. It almost seems unstoppable sometimes because, I'm sorry, in the long game, in the long game, because in a long game, the, a province player can compete with the, in, in, the, in the short game because you might get some stuff done before he gets all those dice together. But in the long game, just rolling all those dice gives you so much more options to work with and you're paying a whole lot less food. So I went on the internet and read about this because I wanted to see if other people thought the same and they did and the designer explained that they're balanced and all and maybe I just can't see it. But I will say this, I think for new players, that's not going to be evident. They're going to play after a while and be like, wow, ports are just better. And so I'm a little concerned about that. I don't know of any easy fix to it. Maybe I'm just bad with strategy, but I'm telling you it was kind of a consensus amongst the people, especially some gamers that I highly respect, really looked at it and we really thought about it and we can't see any way that ports aren't better. That being said, I don't think it means the game is unplayable. It means ports are a little better and people probably gravitate towards those. The game itself offers a lot of options. I especially liked this one here where you could send people out to sea, although this is really exasperated by the ports. If you're playing with the, the ports really make this one even better. If you're playing with this, you might want to play the short game because once you get all those ports, you get all the, you can roll tons of dice, get lots of people and just flood the islands and build ships, which, you know, it's, it's it. but anyhow, I like all these options. I like trying to decide where to send people. The game has a solitaire component as it is. You know, you're playing and rolling and doing your own thing with the dice. You affect people a little bit, you know, sometimes by rolling three skulls and such. And I almost wish the game had, had included two sets of dice so that when you're playing with four players, that the two people at corners would play at the same time and it would be faster because you would go every other time. As it is, I kind of like playing a game with two people or even the solitaire rules because it's just the fastest that way and it keeps me occupied when it's, you know, it's my turn more often. Anyhow, very interesting, a heavy game. You get your components money worth in here. Big wooden blocks, lots of paper and pads and, and pegs. It's a very good looking game. I mean, it, this will be overwhelming to new players like all oh, this stuff, but it's really not that difficult and offers a lot of variety. So this smallish game provides a pretty good civilization feel with dice, I think. So let's roll through the ages, the Iron Age. Dice Tower of Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Tom, suck the door. Boom. Boom.